I wanted to make a video about how I use Logseek to turn knowledge into video. So my process to do research, collect notes, and how do I put those together by showing you a real world example on this is how I get actual results. Now, most of this will be basic things, and that's because I believe in simplicity. I'd rather have a system that is simple and works than a complex system that constantly breaks and I need to tweak with. Now, when making this, I have two types of videos. One is the actual topic. So that's where I collect the research. That's my single source of truth. That is Greenfield. It stays there for the long haul. It's the thing that I'll read when I want to talk about the same topic later. And then the other one is the short-lived content page. Well, the page itself is long-lived because why throw it away? But it's where I basically keep all the notes for that specific piece of content or video that I'm making. Now let's first dive into the topic page because I think that one is the most interesting and the most flexible for most people. Now let me show you the uh, knock free topic. So this was the topic that was discussing last week, this nice keyboard that I have here. And the knock free page talks about this keyboards and all the research that I did about the keyboard, comparing it to like different types of the same set. Looking at the page, there's a couple of things here, uh, a couple of properties on the top, usually things like hey, the PDF manual that I chuck into Logsic as well, uh, how to customize it, some URLs, the website, tags, basic stuff, but also like in what videos was this topic used. That's mostly for me because, you know, I want to see like, hey, where did I talk about this specific topic later? Then another thing is that I have two different modes of working in Logsic. I have focusing on this topic mode. That means that I sit down for a couple of hours and I work on a topic. Then I work in this page. I work straight in the topic page because that's where it's gonna land anyway, so why chuck it anywhere else? And I have the, oh, I have a bright idea in the middle of the day, or I see an interesting article while reading X or Mastodon. And that's stuff that goes into my journal and I will link that towards the main page. And usually I'll mark that with to do. So what I would do as I would make it to do, I would link it towards the page that I want to talk about, not free in this case, and say like example node with bright idea, type whatever you need. And the reason I do this is because then if I go back to the knock free page when I want to do research or work on it, I have this open task query, which is just a basic query that says like this page, knock free and to do viewing. And then it will show up here. And then I'll know like, hey, there's a note that I still need to process or make part of the larger whole. One of my pet peeves when I was working with Logseek was that I didn't have a table of contents when I did long form documents. In time, I learned that instead of working against Logseek, I should work with Logseek. Logseek is an outliner. That means that I don't have a table of contents, I have folds. And that is what you see when you look at the page. Now, these are all folds with details. And if I wanna see the details, I would click on the button and then open that as a sub page. So I do like research and go through this as well. One of the main benefits I think with this is that I can work with keyboards. I can use alt and arrow keys to alt right, alt left, to dive into and out of these contexts. And then you might think like, okay, that's nice and all, but you know, what if I need to keep things side by side? That's another problem that you see very often. It's like, hey, I can't open multiple documents side by side. Yes, you can, because you can open a new window. You go to here, find it here, and then there's like the new window. I think Ctrl N works as well. That works and you can put stuff side by side, but in my experience, it's very clunky. What I prefer to do is just move things towards the sidebar and then work top to bottom. So currently, you know, demoing what I'm doing. This one shows the outline that I'm currently talking about. This is me using Logseek to make this video. And this is just a sub part of what is under here. But as soon as I'm done with this section, I would close this, go here, and then go towards like the next one. And then I would shift click on that move that up. And this is a bit how I work, is that when I'm working on stuff, I will open things on the side when I have to cross check. And when I'm done, I will close the thing on the side. And this makes it so that I have like an automatic built-in workflow, how I go through my notes. For someone with a chaotic brain like me, this keeps my mind a lot clearer than when I have six panes open and I don't know where to put my eyes. Personal preference, but something that I really like. Now, I've already shown you the task query on uh, this side, which is a very simple one. 
I have another one and that one's for emails. Now the query itself says mail and not free. And as you can see here, I have a couple of examples there. Two things, first of all, yes, I have a query and I like the query, but the disadvantage of using the query is I get a lot of information. And another thing that I do is that I like to have things in order and, and split and process. So what I do is I use Ctrl E and then put the links towards the emails on top and then those will link towards the source in the journal. So the journal will tell me when the email happened, what it was about, and this will show me like these things are important. You might wanna have those as a reference. Now, when I take emails from my email app into Logseek, I also try to break them down into blocks. That depends a bit on how I'm working. If I'm really lazy, I'll just put them in a quote block and I'll just have the email as a reference there. But if I wanna refer to individual talking points in that email, then what I do is that I break it up into different bullet points and then I can link to the individual bullet points in other places of my log seek. Now quick dive into the research. So what do I do for research is basically when I'm sitting down and I'm working on the topic, I'll be doing my research in here. And the things that I did is like, hey, I wanted to check out other keyboards. So I made these individual notes about keyboards and I also link towards the keyboard set. And my mind is chaos. So what you see already here is that I have here like a full namespace one, keyboard mechanical factor Alice 80. Um, this one should be there as well, but I'm chaotic. So at some point I'll need to make a decision. Am I gonna keep the namespaces? Am I gonna give a dedicated one? I'm gonna try both. It is not perfect. But what I do though, is that as I'm writing this stuff down, I'll put links towards it. So if you take this one, for example, this, the, the Mistel Barocco, yes, there's lots of notes here, but if I go to the page, the page is empty. And that is because I am not researching this. I was researching the knock freak, but I do link to it so that if in the future, I wanna research a keyboard or I need details on it, I can click here and I can use the references already to get like a basic idea, get started. And then it's soon enough to process the notes. I don't try processing all the notes all the time. You don't have time. And as, if it's not used for some kind of output, then you're just spinning your wheels. Spend the time when you need it, focus on the outcome, not on prepping. That's what I call it, prepping. It's just wasting your time trying to clean your notes. Don't clean your notes, clean them as you need them. Then another bit of chaos on the side here, and it shows that, for example, here, the notes that I made on the moon lander, and let me zoom in a bit, this links towards the content page. So what I used to do is I would basically work from the content that I was making page, and put all the notes there. And the problem that I had, and I started to notice that in this video, is then I have to look at two places. I have to read the video notes that I have, and I have to read the Moonlander notes that I have. Moonlander is a different type of split keyboard. That means I'm, I'm looking in two places. That's why I changed the workflow, because I looked and said, like, this isn't smart. If I wanna do another video on this keyboard, then I should just be able to open the page for the keyboard and find all the relevant information. And I shouldn't be diving into multiple pages for it. This is why I put like all the notes about the keyboard in the knock-free page. And now we'll dive into the other page, the content page, the one that I use to basically get from zero to results. Now, this is a content page and the content page is just a template that I have. So I can look at my template for videos. And this is like, I just created an empty page and I use this template to get it pre-filled. This is the current iteration and it always changes while I'm working on the page because you know, chaos is a thing. Looking at this, uh, what you see here is that it has a lot of properties. So first of all, it's a type video and it has a state and an episode. Uh, the episode is also for my mind again, not every episode makes it towards being published. Sometimes I get like in the mid, I'm working through in the slow knowledge video, for example, and that one's been put to simmer because at some point I lost interest, I couldn't focus on it and it was dragging on. And, but one of the reasons I do this is because by marking it as a video, my giving it the state doing, I have this overview. So I go to my videos, and here I have a query that says like, hey, any page with the type video that is state doing, show it here. And this shows the videos that I'm currently thinking, working, writing on inside Logseek. Other details are the video title. That's very important in YouTube, the topics that are related. And that's of course, because when I wanna work on this, I need to be able to quickly open the topics on the side and get some notes. The channel, which doesn't change, but I might want to have a different channel at some point and I want to keep those notes separated. 
link towards Notion. Now, I wouldn't dive too much into Notion, but one of the reasons why I have this is because I use Notion to plan the videos and then I can hook them up to any automation that I might want to have after it. So let me quickly show you how that looks before going back to Rockseek. Uh, let's see, you got content here. And this is basically the calendar. Uh, this is mostly uh, things I would like to aim for, but doesn't always work out. Things got in the way, this video moved, so everything here probably has to move down one row. But this is like my, my overview. I don't use it a lot uh, because I keep 90% of the work inside Logseek, but I'll get to that later. As you can see, this is where the most of the tasks happen. I tried summarize. I, I used to do like a whole very detailed set in here that didn't help that much. It's nice in the beginning when you're trying to create structure, but these days I just have like a, a rough outline of the things that I need to do. Now, a lot of this stuff is of course very YouTube specific, but that's the goal. This is a page that is about like making it into a YouTube video. I would have a different layout and a different page if I'm trying to make a blog post, for example. Now, as you can see inside this outline, it's similar to here on the side. As you see, I'm, I'm also working on the outline and under this, the current video that we're currently doing. And then of course, the references, and that's mostly when I have ideas for the video. Now, very often the ideas spark as I'm making the video, but sometimes, you know, I just have a good idea for a video, a, a funny B-roll thing, a skit that I wanna put on there. I just chuck it in my journal, link it towards this page, and I'll know that when I'm working on the video, I can go through it. I can use the same trick here that I used for the topic page where I can mark things as to do if I really don't wanna forget it. If I wanna say like, you know, bring this front and center and say like, process this before doing anything else. But that depends very much on like, how complex is the topic? Do I wanna dive into that? Do I wanna do the extra work? Very often it's just like have a reference list and I know from experience that, you know, before doing the outline, just quickly skim the reference to see if there's any new ideas that I had. Another important thing to note is that when I make something like the outline, this is both for blog posts as well for content. I don't just, you know, willy-nilly try this. I have, of course, stuff on the side, but I also link towards the sources. So for example, I have here my pro con list. That one links straight towards the pro con list that was already in my knock and I just use Ctrl E, Ctrl V to block embed these things. No need to type them over. This thing even changes because, you know, in the outline, they're like, I'm talking about the pros, I'm talking about the cons. And then while I'm doing research, the pros and cons might update, meaning that this will make sure that it's always the latest updated version. Sometimes block embeds work very well. Other times I'm just typing like custom text there and I do like a link straight towards the original source, more as a reference than as something where I'm going like, okay, I don't want to do the double work. And it's very dependent on, you know, whatever topic I'm going to talk about. Like, is this something where I need to write it very specific for the video? Or is it something that I can quote verbatim? For example, if I want to reference towards the story, then the story might be in my notes and then I can just, you know, link to it verbatim and just talk about the story. And of course, a nice thing about using a different content page is that you can drag different topics into it. And that's of course why I have this separate page and I don't put like the single source of truth in there anymore. Now I just say like, hey, I'm gonna talk about the keyboard, I'm gonna talk about split keyboards, I'm gonna talk about Moonlander in this video, drag all those topics in and then research that and all use that information to put it into the outline. Now, if you like the content, help me out and hit that like button. That really helps me out. A comment is also great. If you get any questions, I read all the comments. I try to answer them to the best of my ability. I can't do this alone. I need your help to get this channel to be successful and grow. Else I'm just, you know, talking towards the wall. Now, a quick couple of notes on the integrations that I'm doing. Now, the integrations aren't very technical. They're usually just URLs towards other tools. There's two tools that I use a lot. Notion, mostly because uh, I tried working, setting up like the, the infrastructure for a team with mixed success last year. And that means that I needed some place where I can share the status and hand over work to other people, which is what I used Notion for. I really like the calendar view. It gives me like an overview and goals to strive for as I'm working. The other one is Todoist and that one's two folded. One is the quick ad. If I'm walking down the street and I have an idea, I don't have time to wait for Logseek to start to sync. Quick ad is my friend there. I just type something in, an idea or a task or whatever, process the inbox and then it moves into Logseek. And another thing is that Todoist allows me to have notifications when I need them. I am scatterbrained and Todoist can say like, hey, you're near store X. Maybe you should get that thing that you needed. Or B, it's eight o'clock in the evening. Make sure to pack this in your bag for tomorrow. 
But as you can see, most of the stuff these days goes into log seek. This is like the place where my brain just gets together and most of the notes live for future reference. Now, if you're a bit like me, then you want to get stuff done. If you need a way to quickly get from A to B to combine the tools that you have to get the best result, I highly recommend checking out the paperless movement. I have a link in the description as I'm one of the paperless move experts where I look on how is your workflow together, get less tools in there, get the right tools in there and then work towards a result. If you watched all the way to the end, then remember you're awesome. Keep it up.